I wanted to make this video about six months ago, but then I thought, no, I'll save it for Halloween because of theming or whatever. I don't know. Shut up. I don't have to explain myself. I'm excited to tell you this story. Wow! <laughs> so, haunted houses. I think haunted houses, they're fine, but I don't want to brag or anything. But since the age of 16, I've never been in a haunted house that I was scared of. Granted, all the haunted houses I've been in were free and didn't have me sign a waiver. And when I was little, sure, I was terrified of haunted houses. It's just... I don't know, I think I kept telling myself that none of it was real, and then when I grew up, I just always knew that none of it was real. When you can see the severed hand is made of plastic, all the tension you previously had is kinda lost. And sure, I still get startled at the jump scares, but since they don't stab you or anything, it's always awkward afterwards. Uh, hello? Uh, I'm just gonna walk this way now. Or maybe I don't get scared because I don't feel emotions anymore. Who knows? But there is one haunted house experience during my senior year of high school that I will never forget because it was probably one of the most traumatizing things I've ever seen. I haven't seen that many traumatizing things. And also, I won't forget it because I'm about to immortalize the experience by making a YouTube video about it. Alright, my senior year, I was part of my school's drama club. I was a theater kid. And the clubs at the school got to help do some of the activities for the school's fair. The whole school is putting on a fair probably to raise money or something. It seems that schools are always in need of some extra cash. Have you ever noticed that? So the football team got to do the dunk tank, the band kids, like, face painted or something, I don't remember, it's not important. And the theater kids, since the fair is in October and that's Halloween's month, we got to put on a haunted house. Cool! The drama club was separated into groups, and we would each be a scary part in the haunted house. And we got to make the haunted house inside the school, so we had a lot of area to work with, and there was a lot of space in between each scary thing. My group, what we did, is we dressed up as vampires, but scary vampires, and we sat at this dinner table, and we decorated it with fake organs, goblets filled with blood, red Kool-Aid, and we had this freshman girl that was laying on top of the table, and we put fake organs coming out of her, you know, to make it look like we were eating her because vampires eat people. Okay, saying that out loud, I realize that doesn't make any sense. Why would a group of vampires be eating someone? They, they, they don't do that. We put a yellow shade over the light above for a good spoopy atmosphere. We had a smoke machine, some ambient Halloween music playing. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Our group was pretty legit. Whenever a group of people walked by, we would just silently stare at them. And then the freshman on the table would scream at the top of her lungs. She was really good at screaming, by the way. And since we had so much space in between each of the scary parts, when they walked past us, we would get up and chase them. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, so you have to understand that theater kids are very loud, extroverted people. I need to tell you about this one kid who was in my vampire group. Um, we'll just name him... Balake. Yeah, Balake. Balake and I were both part of the school's improv club, so we were both pretty funny people, except Balake was just out there. He was loud. It seemed he was just always screaming. I didn't have any classes with him, but he was obviously the high self-esteem class clown kind of kid. So Balake, being the loud and more popular kid, he got to sit at the head of our table. We had done the haunted house for about two hours at this point, and I want you to think what it's like to go inside a haunted house. Just going in for five minutes, that will already make me feel uncomfortable and sweaty. All the strobe lights, the smoke and the freshman over here who had to be constantly screaming bloody murder. Again, you did a good job, freshman. And we were supposed to get a break sometime in the middle, but since the haunted house was so popular, we didn't get one break. So I'm a little loopy after doing all this for so long, right? I was totally not ready for what was about to happen. This group of people walk in and we do our normal thing. We get up and we chase them. But Balake got pretty physical with this one little boy. Like he kind of shook him up a bit. And I didn't see exactly what happened. But apparently this little boy was holding a fish in a plastic baggie. You know those little tiny fish that are actually supposed to be used as food for bigger fish that you can win as prizes and fairs. And 99% of the time the fish die within two weeks because you don't have the right aquarium equipment. So you just put them in water and watch them slowly die. You know those fish? I didn't think people were allowed to bring their new pet fish into the haunted house, but I guess he smuggled it in or something. I didn't see the kid drop the fish. Maybe Balake slapped it out of his hands. That could have happened. I just heard a scream and I saw a fish flopping around in a puddle on the floor. Fish look like they're in so much pain when they're out of water. I don't flail around uncontrollably when I go swimming. Like, calm down, fish. I'm silently panicking because the fish looks like he's going to die in three seconds if we don't do something. I start thinking of places we can put the fish. Uh, uh, the toilet. But Balake, without saying anything, just immediately bent down, cupped the tiny fish in his hands, he ran back to the table, he put the fish in an empty goblet, and then he poured red Kool-Aid into the cup. Nah, I'm just kidding. He got a water bottle from under the table because they gave us water bottles, and the fish was fine, ladies and gentlemen. It all happened so fast, and thanks to Balake's quick thinking, he saved this little kid's fish. The kid was still a couple of feet down the hall. Balake took the goblet in his hands, he walked it over to the kid, he reached out his hand to give the kid his fish. 
and then he just chugged the drink! Block it! He drank the fish! And this little kid let out the most blood-curdling scream. It sounded like this kid just watched his pet get swallowed by a complete stranger. It was honestly the loudest scream I heard that night. I bet the next group of people behind these guys were thinking, Oh man, whatever's next must be really scary to get that kid to scream like that. The kid started trying to attack Balake, and I'm sure if he had the correct tools he would have murdered him. Balake eventually spat out the fish. Why? He didn't swallow it, thankfully. He just kept it swimming in his mouth. But I mean, that's what you gotta do when you're working in a haunted house. You have to scare people any way you can. I was just a bystander, and I still wake up in a cold sweat thinking about it. Turns out this kid was actually Balake's little brother, so at least he didn't do this to a complete stranger. Man, you really gotta appreciate what lengths older brothers go through to torment the little brother. Balake's little brother, you might be watching, but I was there, dude. I know what pain you go through. I have an older brother, too. I know what it's like to be Luigi. I mean, he never swallowed any of my pets. He would just steal my food. He also never let me win in Super Smash Bros. Anytime I was about to win, he would turn off the Nintendo. But I mean, I'm fine. Look how I turned out.